This video is brought to you by Native. Plastic has been the staple of our manufacturing industry over the last 60 years. It was made to last, and it did, to the point where it's now everywhere on the planet, even in our bodies. The trouble is that we've been struggling to find a greener alternative to this polluting threat. But what if I told you that the solution to the plastic crisis could be rooted in something green and simple like seaweed? Could seaweed be the plastic of the future? Let's see if we can come to a decision on this. I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. You may have noticed that I have a little bit of a plastic obsession. I've talked about other plastic alternatives like mycelium fungus and algae, as well as our plastic recycling problem. Now, this isn't something that we can wish cycle our way out of, so we need to find ways to deal with our collective plastic obsession. Our consumer society has been built upon durable plastic pillars, yet those pillars are gradually sinking into a liquid foundation, also known as the ocean. However, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is not the only place to look for plastic. Crazy as it sounds, tiny shreds of microplastics were found on the top of Mount Everest, the highest peak on Earth, as well as the Mariana Trench, the deepest spot in the ocean. If that doesn't sound worrying enough, last March, scientists found them in human blood for the first time. Now, I don't know about you, but that makes my blood kind of run cold. As those tiny plastic particles travel through our veins, scientists wonder whether they could reach vital organs and affect their functioning. As we wait to find out the potentially alarming answer to that question, you may have another one. Aren't we recycling plastic? As I walked through in a previous video, the answer is kind of complicated since it depends on the type of plastic you're talking about. Unfortunately, recycling most of the plastic we produce is not profitable enough. Not even for China, who broke the worthless plastic recycling cycle for good in 2018. So what do we do? One option is to feed plastic to microbes. Researchers have been putting on their chef's hats to create a plastic buffet. But how does it actually work? Well, they found a bacteria that loves feasting on polyethylene terephthalate, or PET. They can easily break it down into its building blocks, which are terephthalate, TPA, and ethylene glycol, EG. Yet for this process to make sense, those broken down materials should have a worthwhile application. While EG has been used for car antifreeze for years, TPA has been useless, until a couple of months ago. That's when scientists found a recipe for a TPA greedy enzyme that breaks down the TPA. All of this enzyme research is slowly leading to commercialization. The French company Carbios is scaling up its enzymatic PET recycling process. After demonstrating their innovation at pilot scale, last February, Carbios forged a partnership with Indorama Ventures to build the world's first industrial scale PET biorecycling plant. Now, their enzymes will eat up the equivalent of 2 billion PET bottles per year. They claim their technology can upcycle PET components into high quality, 100% recyclable new PET products over and over again. I'm not sure about the enzymes, but that sounds like a healthier diet for the planet than we're currently giving it. Now, aside from the plastic eating microorganisms, there are other ready to eat alternatives like fungus. I did a deep dive into fungus a while back. <laughs> that didn't sound right, but I swear I didn't take any magic mushrooms. I made a video on mycelium as a plastic alternative. Ecovative has been turning fungi into cheaper, greener, and perhaps tastier foams than polystyrene based ones since 2006. It's a lot like this brick. I actually bought this from them as a sample. Now with a 12% lower energy consumption and 90% smaller carbon footprint, their production has mushroomed over time. That's where another plastic-free feedback comes into play, and that's seaweed. Now there's two major reasons why seaweed could be a good candidate to supplant plastic. First, its sourcing is more sustainable. When you compare it to terrestrial plants, seaweed grows 10 times faster, consumes less water, and takes up less than 10% of the land that those crops need. Also, converting land-based plants into plastic-free utensils will bite into our food production. Instead, seaweed won't pose any food security risk. Aside from sustainability, there's also the practical aspect to consider. Seaweed contains an oily substance fraction that could work just like the petroleum-derived one. There's a bunch of startups that have recognized seaweed's potential and are now trying to surf its slimy wave. But before I get to that, there's something I've started doing when it comes to plastic. It really comes down to being more aware of the products that you buy and how you use them and how they're made. Now, I've been using products from today's sponsor, Native, for over eight months now. Now, I don't use them just because they're a sponsor. I really do love them. Their plastic-free deodorant has a new and improved design, uses the same exact formula as their regular deodorant. It's just in a more sustainable package. You're talking about saving 37 grams of single-use plastic with every deodorant you buy. But it's not just about the packaging. I have yet to try a scent that I don't like. One of my favorites is cucumber and mint, which is a very subtle and crisp, fresh smell. They dry quickly and aren't sticky at all. 
you'll be able to recognize everything on their ingredient list, and it's aluminum, paraben, and cruelty-free. Three plastic-free deodorants are usually $39, but if you use my link and code UNDECIDED2, you'll get them for $26. That's 33% off. And with my code, you can also get 20% off any body wash or toothpaste. Check out the link in the description, and thanks to Native and to all of you for supporting the channel. So back to the startups trying to ride seaweed's slimy wave. After raising 1.3 million last September, Ulu has begun converting seaweed into biopolymers. To be more specific, polyhydroxyalkanoates. Say that five times fast. <laughs> Funny names aside, the Australian startup claims that their materials are as strong as plastic while being biodegradable, even in the darkest and coldest spots in the ocean. Now, studies have shown that under standard conditions, PHAs fully break down in about two months, which is a significant advancement compared to traditional plastic that hangs around for centuries in the worst case scenario. Now, backed by the Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization, Ulu is collecting seaweed from a farm in Indonesia. Once in their lab, the harvested seaweed is first whittled down into its biobricks, including sugars, which are then extracted and chucked into a microbes filled tank to ferment. Making PHAs out of seaweed-derived sugars would be more eco-friendly than relying on corn-based glucose, which is the typical feedstock that you'd use, because corn is water-intensive to grow and takes up a lot of land. In contrast, Ulu just needs seawater and microbes. Plus, their material would be carbon-negative as seaweed absorbs CO2 while it grows in the ocean. PHAs could be used for different packaging materials such as films, boxes, or foams. Good news is that we may see Ulu's products pretty soon as the startup is launching their first pilot plant in 2023. Now, while Ulu seaweed-based products have just climbed on the surfboard, Knotplaz is already on the crest of the wave. In 2019, the UK-based startup supplied edible seaweed pouches filled with an energy drink for the London Marathon. Quenching the thirst of over 40,000 runners, their OHO capsules prevented 200,000 single-use plastic bottles from flooding a landfill. But it's not just about water you could squeeze a smorgasbord of other liquids into their sachets. Cocktails, ketchup, salad dressing, you name it. Imagine this in place of those tiny little ketchup packets that you see in fast food restaurants everywhere. Notpla is trying to make packaging disappear, literally. What's their secret sauce? Well, their team of scientists designed a special machine that mixes brown seaweed with other plants and churns out tasty membranes. As tasty as a membrane sounds to eat, <laughs> you don't have to, but you could. They'll vanish in your backyard composter or anywhere else in less than six weeks. Aside from the pouches, Notpla came up with a plastic-free liner for takeaway boxes. Now, this ticked all the boxes for Just Eat, who tested and perhaps tasted, too, 30,000 biodegradable to-go food containers across the UK in 2021 alone. Thanks to the $13.5 million raised by Notpla in December of 2021, their boxes will deliver food to people in other European countries as well. Now, when it comes to disposable plastic bags, Sway leads the way. In 2021, the California-based startup won the Beyond the Bag Challenge and scooped up $2.5 million to scale up the production of their seaweed-based bags. Sway makes climate-friendly bags out of a specific type of microalgae called kelp. Now, this kind of seaweed is mostly found in the deep sea. Being away from the shore, these underground forests are less likely to be disturbed, which means storing CO2 for a longer period of time. They can actually capture 20 times more carbon than trees. And aside from being carbon negative, sway material would be easily scalable as it can fit into well-established plastic supply chains. In collaboration with the Compost Manufacturing Alliance, the biotech company is designing their bags to be home compostable. A lot of those compostable bags, like sandwich bags that you can typically buy for yourself in the store, they're only compostable through industrial processes, not at home in your backyard. On top of that, sway sources its kelp only from farms that meet the Aquaculture Stewardship Council standards. In other words, their harvest will not damage the ocean and its biodiversity. Currently developing pilots with different retailers, the startup is aiming to ramp up their throughput by July of this year. Along with bags, straws have been a main target of plastic bans over the last few years. Unlike soggy paper alternatives, Lollyware came up with an extraordinary product, a blue carbon straw. Inspired by the ocean's stored carbon, also known as blue carbon, they developed their sea technology to swap plastic with seaweed. They grind down their ocean farm seaweed and mix it with colorful materials and shell powder. They then pass this vegan soup through an extruder to obtain a plastic-free pellet. And their pellets can be molded into the final straw using standard machinery used for plastic manufacturing. Just like with Sway, this drives down the cost of their final output by tapping into existing infrastructure. Yet their price is still slightly higher than that of plastic straws. In 2020, with the aim of bypassing China competition, the startup was partnered with American manufacturer Sinclair and Rush 
to scale up the first US-based production of seaweed straws. Besides being made of 100% bio-based, FDA-approved materials, their straws will break down in a home composter. Clearly, seaweed seems to be a promising material for ditching plastic for good. However, we should bear in mind that algae-based products are just seedlings compared to the mature plastic benchmark, whose manufacture has been optimized over the last six decades. Since it's still a niche sector, seaweed packaging is still more expensive than its plastic counterpart. According to the Coherent Market Insights, you could spend up to $3,600 to make one ton of edible film. This high production cost could hamper the growth of knot plot packaging and the likes within the next six years. Nevertheless, some experts say seaweed packaging price will drop as more companies bring it to market. Now, apart from convenience, algae-based packaging may not match the outstanding plastic strength and durability. Take Knotplaw's edible capsules, for instance. While being very handy, those sachets may easily burst when shipped around. Fueled by plastic bans, the market for seaweed-based packaging is expected to bloom at a rate of over 16% over the next five years. Yet this likely won't be enough for seaweed alone to satisfy our hunger for sustainable packaging. This is linked to the current limitations and costs of seaweed farming. As it stands, most of the world's algae production comes from labor-intensive farms located in Asia's shallow coastal waters. Labor accounts for 50% of the total production. Unfortunately, because of the low level of mechanization and lacking infrastructure, expanding algae cultivation to offshore locations is still not cost-efficient compared to land-based agriculture. An economic feasibility study conducted in 2016 concluded that revenues from seaweed production in the North Sea should increase by 300% to make cultivation profitable. Now, bureaucracy is not helping either. For example, you may struggle to get a permit for a seaweed farm here in the US. That's mostly because you're dealing with public waters where you compete with the military, shipping companies, and recreational activities. And funny enough, we may solve ocean's plastic pollution by tapping into an ocean renewable source. Thanks to recent investments, a tsunami of startups have been floating exciting seaweed-based packaging ideas. Nevertheless, we'll need to upgrade our algae farming technology to sustainably keep up with the global demand for eco-friendly packaging. In the meantime, we could integrate our plastic-free diet with other organic materials like mushrooms and corn. I don't think we're gonna see one solution to fix our plastic problem, but an assortment of ideas and products that could wean us off our plastic addiction. So are you still undecided? Do you think seaweed could be the future of plastic? Jump in the comments and let me know, and be sure to check out my follow-up podcast, Still To Be Determined, where we'll be discussing some of your feedback. If you like this video, be sure to check out one of the ones over here, and thanks to all of my patrons and a big welcome to new producer Andy Goes, I hope I pronounced your name right, for your continued support. And thanks to all of you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.